in the Reach, Sir Hobart Hightower was left in command of the army, which to this point largely succeeded in conquering the territory for the Greens. Yet he was unable to capitalize on their victories, as the two Dragon Seed betrayers were greedy and belligerent, refusing to move until their outrageous demands were met, all the while gathering many dishonorable warriors to their cause. While Ulf the White wanted Highgarden, the capital of the Reach held by House Tyrell, Hugh Hammer sought an even greater prize, donning a crown of black iron to proclaim himself King of Westeros. When young Daron Targaryen objected by throwing wine in Hugh's face, he threatened to beat the boy, and when Sir Roger Corn removed the crown, the would-be king nailed three horseshoes to his skull. Their increasing retinue of men and fearsome dragons, combined with the army's loss of a unifying leader, meant the betrayers were formidable obstacles to progress that could not be easily overcome and would ultimately destroy them. Unwilling to allow Hugh Hammer's treason, the Caltrop conspiracy formed, wherein a group of nobles sought to assassinate the two betrayers. Yet before they could strike, the Second Battle of Tumbleton erupted when Adam Valerion and Sea Smoke led a Riverland army of 4,000 blacks in a vicious surprise attack. Unable to live with the shame of being named a traitor, Adam fought with tremendous courage, engaging in a chaotic melee with the riderless dragons Vermithor and Tessarion, ending with all of them dead or gravely wounded to die soon after. A brutal battle resulting in many nobles and warriors killed, young Prince Darren Targaryen was the most notable figure among them, meaning that of Alicent Hightower's four children and three grandchildren, only Aegon II and Jahera remained. Winning a great victory for the Blacks, the Greens were unable to count on the Betrayers, as Ulf the White was so drunk he slept through the fighting, and Hugh Hammer was killed by the valiant Green Caltrop, Bull John Roxton, who was then cut down by the False King's men. Though they lost the battle, many Green nobles survived as the gate to the city remained closed, and the enemy army had no more dragons or siege equipment. Therefore, the Blacks looted the dead and moved on, while the Greens remained with the shattered remnants of their army in town. Deciding to rid themselves of Ulf the White, who was quick to name himself king after Hugh's death, the Caltrops gifted him poisoned wine. Yet the betrayer grew suspicious, and so Sir Hobart Hightower willingly sacrificed himself by drinking the wine and praising its taste, thereby giving Ulf the confidence to partake. Both died moments later. No longer finding a friendly welcome in the Crown Lands, most of Rhaenyra's men deserted, and she was forced to sell her crown to buy passage on a ship. Among those still loyal to the Queen were the Manderleys of White Harbor, who begged her to retreat north where she had many allies. But Rhaenyra suffered so much despair and endured such endless bouts of rage, she could no longer think rationally, refusing all sage advice to instead make her way to Dragonstone, unaware her brother Aegon already took the fortress. Capturing the Queen and her son, Aegon the Younger was held hostage and forced to watch his mother, Queen Rhaenyra of the Black Faction, rightful heir to Viserys I, burned alive and eaten by the usurper's dragon, Sunfire. Having survived many injuries and won many battles throughout his life, Sunfire's wounds eventually grew worse and he passed away on Dragonstone. With the Queen dead, Aegon II returned to King's Landing and once again sat upon the Iron Throne, finding a city in chaos from rebels and traitors. Having lost control of the capital for a period known as the Moon of Three Kings, the Shepherd ruled his mob from the ruins of the Dragon Pit, while Tristane Truefire and Sir Perkin the Flea took the Red Keep. Then there was Gaiman Palehair, the five-year-old son of a prostitute crowned king in a brothel atop Visenya's Hill, claiming legitimacy as the bastard son of Aegon II. With his mother in control, Gaiman Palehair issued numerous progressive decrees seeking to create equality between men and women. Yet these would-be rulers were soon swept aside by the armies of House Baratheon, which joined Aegon in the capital. Defeating all three pretenders, Tristane and the prostitute were executed, while Gaiman Palehair was spared and made a ward of House Targaryen. The Shepherd, who remained defiant until the end, was burned alive along with hundreds of his supporters. Though Rhaenyra was dead, Aegon set the Iron Throne and a Baratheon army held the capital. Aegon II and the Green Faction somehow found themselves on the verge of total annihilation. In this final phase of the war, the North, Riverlands, Vale, and Iron Islands were firmly with the Blacks, while the Crownlands, Reach, and Westerlands were neutralized, leaving only the Stormlands and capital with Aegon II. Yet of all the enemies they were now facing, the most insurmountable was the Northern Army of Lord Craig and Stark, who finally finished gathering a massive host of up to 20,000 men to conquer the South for Rhaenyra's son Aegon the Younger. Joining his march to victory were the armies of the Vale, while the Riverland army, recently victorious in the Reach, were even closer, mere days away from King's Landing. 
seeking to end the immediate threat. Lord Boros Baratheon led his army out of the capital and engaged the River Lords in the Battle of the King's Road, but he greatly underestimated the young, highly capable enemy leaders like Lord Kermit Tully, Lord Benjikop Blackwood, and Lady Alison Blackwood, known collectively as the Lads, and their grizzled veteran warriors, dismissing them as boys and women, only to be soundly defeated. Seeing the tide turning against the Greens, the Crown Lands contingent betrayed the Baratheon army as they attempted to retreat, leading to complete and total victory for the Blacks. A courageous warrior to the end, Boros slew a dozen knights, as well as the Lords Derry and Malister, before falling to Kermit Tully. Left with no army at all, and the River Lords only one day from the capital, Aegon II was finished and the Greens defeated, but still he refused to consider surrender. When Corlys Valerion, who was released from prison and named Master of Ships for the King, suggested Aegon join the Night's Watch, the King instead played his final hand by ordering his hostage, Aegon the Younger's ear cut off so it could be sent to the Blacks as a warning that the boy would be killed if they moved on the capital. This would be the last order he ever gave, as Aegon II, usurper King of the Green Faction, was found dead sometime later, assassinated by poisoned wine. Hoping to avoid further bloodshed, Lord Corlys Valerion set about establishing peace before the enemy could arrive, crowning Rhaenyra's son Aegon III as King of Westeros, hoping this might end the civil war on satisfying terms for the approaching armies. But he was mistaken, as only Lord Craig and Stark of Winterfell held the power and authority to end this conflict, and he would allow no peace until his honor was satisfied. Though the lads of the Riverlands were happy to meet Corlys Valerion and accept an easy victory, they quickly fell in line behind Craig and Stark, both fearing his wrath and admiring his abilities as a warrior and leader, agreeing to follow his command in how the war must proceed. Known as the Hour of the Wolf, Craig and Stark ruled as Hand of the King, making plans for his massive army to launch a campaign of vengeance against all those who defied Queen Rhaenyra, including the Stormlands, Reach, and Westerlands. He also imprisoned those suspected of murdering Aegon II without his authorization, ultimately calling for the execution of 22 prisoners, including Corlys Valerion. Yet while Craig and Stark was ready to shed as much blood as he deemed necessary, his harsher tendencies were slowly softened by Lady Alison Blackwood, who grew romantically involved with the Lord, offering sage advice that might spare Westeros further suffering. Falling in love with and marrying Lady Alison, Cregan agreed to forego his campaign of vengeance, spared the life of Corlys Valerion, and allowed most of the condemned to join the Night's Watch, though the King's Guard Giles Belgrave and Master of Whisperers Larys Strong chose death and thus were personally executed by Lord Stark, wielding Ice, the Valyrian steel sword of his family. As for Lady Alicent, whose machinations led to such destruction, she went mad in captivity and eventually died, a sad, lonely wretch, haunted by the memories of all those she'd lost. Thus it was that the dance of the Dragon Civil War finally ended, leaving Aegon III, the 11-year-old son of Rhaenyra, as King of Westeros. Though Craig and Stark was granted many rewards by the Crown, he refused to take a position on the Regency Council and only served as Hand of the King for two weeks before returning to Winterfell, leaving the Southerners to their own affairs. After two years of vicious fighting, the lands of Westeros were utterly ravaged, losing many towns, castles, resources, and lives. Yet perhaps the most impactful consequence of this terrible civil war came from the death of so many dragons and members of the royal family, which left House Targaryen's power and influence massively reduced, lessening further with each passing year until the dragons entirely died out, allowing for the overthrow of their dynasty by King Robert Baratheon of the Stormlands in 283 AC. Following the dance, only four dragons survived, two of which remained wild the rest of their lives, while Sheepstealer flew with nettles and played no more part in the affairs of Westeros. That left mourning as the only dragon of House Targaryen by the end of 131 AC, with the king's half-sister Reyna as their only dragon rider. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Faith the Wandering Huntress, Rene the Demigod, Ellen Dill of Numenor, and Feanor Nathan. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.